Hey everybody. So we're gonna go completely virtual this week because of the number of people that are sick and the number of people that are quarantined. Today we're gonna to be talking about our commitment to prayer. So have you ever thought about what a direct line that prayer is? How we have the privilege of talking to the God of the universe. And I'm reminded of a couple of stories about telephones of all things. First of all, you know, or maybe you don't know, you can actually call the White House. You won't talk to the president, but you will talk to um, an answering service. There's, there's a 24-hour answering service there at the White House. But when telephones were first installed about 100 years ago, there was only one telephone at the White House. And it was right down the hall from the Oval Office. And according to... Um, Incidental reports. If you call the White House, President Grover Cleveland actually answered the phone. He, he answered his own phone. <laughs> now, that doesn't happen today. Um, before you guys were born, back in 1992, one of the, the bands that I have uh, enjoyed over my, over my many years um, was on a tour, the Zoo TV Tour is the band U2. And as part of their um, onstage presentation and concert every night, they actually called the White House and they got to know the um, answering service so well, the, 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 the group of people that worked the switchboard, that they actually invited them to come to a show and even brought them out on the tour plane, um, which I thought was really kind of cool. Um, it was just part of the, the show uh, dealing with politics of the 90s, a kind of a protest against the Gulf War. But isn't it amazing that people have this kind of access? You, you might not be able to talk to the president, but you can talk to somebody there at the White House. Well, we love to have access. We, we love having this kind of direct line to things. And we have a direct line to God all the time in prayer. I'm going to be talking today from Colossians chapter 1, and I'm going to begin with verses um, 3 through the first part of verse 6, and this is what Paul says. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, for we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and, love, and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. You've already heard about this hope in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Paul starts out this little section about prayer with saying, hey, you you pray with thanksgiving for other people. Notice that he says, um, we always thank God when we pray for you. He didn't say if we pray for you. He says when. So we are praying, first of all, with thanksgiving for the other believers. Now, I want you to think for a second about why it's so important that we pray for other believers. We pray for other believers because our prayers are, are effective. We pray for them for healing. We pray for them for blessings. We pray for them for whatever's going on in their lives. And sometimes we pray for them for stuff we don't even know is going on in their lives. And God answers those prayers and blesses other believers. We, it's important that we pray for other believers to soften our hearts toward other people. We are so prone to be selfish. That is part of our human nature. And when we pray for others, we are doing something that is not for us, that we don't have a benefit from. And it teaches us to love better. Now, another thing that we need to think about is um, how your prayer life would change if you focused on praying for others. I think when we focus on praying for others, and that's not just, you know, having a prayer list and going down through there and saying, okay, Lord, be with this need, be with this need. But I mean, I think it's praying for even the needs that they don't have yet, or we don't know about yet. We become more focused on the kingdom. It's not so much about how things are going to benefit us anymore, but it's how things are going to benefit the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God is going to grow. We're going to be more sensitive to others 
when we pray for them. All right, continuing from verse 6 in Colossians chapter 1. It is bearing fruit and growing all over the world, just as it has among you since the day you heard it. This is talking about the gospel. And have come to truly appreciate God's grace. You learn this from Epaphras, our dearly loved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he's told us about your love in the Spirit. Now, Paul was saying that he's not only thanking God for the people there, but he's thanking God for the gospel growing among them as they are learning more deeply about how God's grace works and they are spreading the news to others and it's bearing fruit. You know, that's part of our gospel mission is to bear fruit. I think we always need to be looking at those fruits of the Spirit and making sure that those are evident in our lives. And one of the ways we do this is keeping our prayer life alive and praying for other people. Now, notice in this passage, he says he's praying for Epaphras. Epaphras, we don't really know just a whole lot about him, but he was someone who played a really important role in um, the role in the gro the growth of the Colossian church, and he probably was from Ephesus and then moved to Colossae um, to help with the church there. Now, we need to pray for those that are in ministry. You know, we think about what should we pray about? Well, we need to pray for their strength. We need to pray for their um, their growing in grace themselves, their their growth in, in Christ. We need to pray for their encouragement. Being in ministry is an extremely, extremely stressful thing, and it can be so discouraging. It's discouraging when things don't seem to be going well. It's discouraging when people don't seem to be responding to the message of the gospel. It's discouraging when a minister doesn't see growth in those that he or she is ministering to. So we need to pray for those ministers of the gospel to be strengthened. We also need to pray that um, we can be intentional. We can be intentional with our prayers for those, for those in ministry by seeking out what their needs are. And we can be intentional with our prayers for our church, not our church here at home, but also the global church. We can be intentional to pray that we are good representatives of Christ, that when the world sees us, they see the love of Christ, that they don't see the things that we fall short of. That's important. We all fall short every day, but it's very important that we are presenting a real picture of the love of God to the world. Now, our prayer life also helps us with the Great Commission. Remember the Great Commission is, as we're going out through our lives, that we are to preach the gospel to everybody and we're to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We can't do this without prayer. We can't do this without a committed prayer life. Prayer is the fuel that builds us up to do this work. We can't do without it. As the people of God, we are strengthened, and Jesus receives honor when we pray. All right, our last section says, For this reason only, this is verses 9 through 12, sorry. For this reason also, since the day we heard this, we have not stopped praying for you. We're asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, that you may have great endurance and patience, face, excuse me, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the saints' inheritance in the light. We pray for our spiritual growth, our own and, our other, and the spiritual growth of other believers. We need to pray that everybody will be filled with the knowledge of God's will, that we will live lives worthy of and pleasing to Christ, that we will be fully strengthened by God, and that we will give joyous thanks to God. Folks, don't neglect your prayer life. Pray for yourselves. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray for your church. Pray for the church in the world, that we are able to fulfill the Great Commission, and that the world sees Jesus through us. 
Let's pray. Lord, I ask you to be with these students, Lord, everybody that is watching this video, that they may understand that, Lord, what we need to do is pray for each other. And Lord, help us to not, to endure pr with prayer, to keep going with prayer. And Lord, to pray for the spiritual, physical, emotional uh, health needs of everybody that we know. In Jesus' name, amen.